dream a dream so fair. I stood in old Jerusalem beside the temple there. I heard the children singing, and ever as they sang, I thought the voice of angels from heaven in answer rang. I thought the voice of angels from heaven to answer rang. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, lift up your gates and see. The streets no longer rang, hushed with the glad hosannas the little children sang. The sun grew dark with mystery, the morn was cold and chill, as the shadow of a cross arose upon a lonely hill. As the shadow of a cross arose upon a day service. We hope that the service is a blessing to you. It's so grand to see all of you here. Uh, if you purchased a plant, we have beautiful plants, please take it after the service, but the flower committee would love to have the tins returned after planting. In the narthex, there is a sign-up sheet for lay readers and ushers from May through August. Please sign up today if you can serve in that capacity. It is a delight to welcome Cindy Steele and Scott Ramsey. 
aren't they magnificent? We're, and you can clap, you can applaud. It's wonderful. <laughs> we give thanks for the saints, for the saints who are here today, for the saints in the church triumphant, for the saints who helped us get the service together. So many people worked in the background. And I want to especially thank a saint who is not here today. His name is Pastor Stan Mitchell, and he provided the inspiration for the message this morning and gave me permission to use some of his words. Would you please stand with me for our opening hymn and remain standing for the liturgy, hymn number 358. <laughs> from 90 to 91, but the hymn ends at the top of 92. The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Sing this aloud. Proclaim it to the ends of the earth. The Lord has set his people free. Oh, 
God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By God's great mercy, we are given new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Praise, Praise honor, glory, and, and power, power to the one seated on the throne and, and to the, the Lamb forever and ever. ever. Jesus was handed over to death for our sins. And we raise to life for our justification. Then what can separate us from the love of Christ? Can affliction or hardship? Can persecution, hunger, nakedness, peril, or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. For we are convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come. Nor powers, nor heights, nor depths, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. It is so wonderful to have our kids back in church. And my friends, it has been a long time since we have been able to do this, isn't it? It's been a long time since I've been able to sit here and talk with you. It's been such a long couple of years. But I'm so very glad that we get to do this again. So thank you all for coming and sitting with me. I know that you all know what today is, right? It's Easter Sunday. And today has been filled with a lot of excitement, hasn't it? We had a really great morning up at the cemetery, blowing bubbles and singing. And then Miss Erin had an awesome Sunday school for you guys where you got to make crafts and have an egg hunt. And so I thought I would continue our fun today by having another kind of egg hunt. And this isn't going to be one like you had this morning with candy. This one is going to help us remember our Easter story. So I brought with me some eggs. And can someone point to the pink egg for me? Right there. All right. Good job. So in our pink egg today, we have a donkey. And uh, does anyone remember what these were from last week, Kina? The palm. I know it kind of looks like a fern, but this is to represent a palm branch. So we have a donkey and a palm branch today. Last week was Palm Sunday, which is the day that we celebrate Jesus' arrival in Jerusalem. Jesus rode into town on a donkey, which was common for kings to do during this time. But Jesus was not the king of riches or power. He was the king of love. When he arrived, his followers placed palm branches at his feet and shouted, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Who can find an orange egg for me? Oh, good job, Wendy. There's our orange egg. Let's see what's in our orange egg. 
guys know what these are? What might these be? Should we find out? Bread. Bread and, and wine, the wine cup. A few days later, Jesus gathered his disciples for his last supper. During supper, he took the bread and the cup to his disciples and said, Take, eat. Take, drink. Do this in remembrance of me. Now, you guys probably, this looks familiar to some of you, right? We still partake in the bread and the wine and the cup and the bread um, when we have our communion to celebrate our love and devotion to Jesus. Next, we need to find the yellow egg. The yellow egg. Oh, good job. Oh, you guys know your colors so well. You know, yeah, that's the yellow egg. All right, in our yellow egg, we have a flower. And this flower represents the garden called Gethsemane, where Jesus went after dinner to talk to his father, God. Jesus knew that being the king of love meant he would have to sacrifice for others. But he still said to God, let it be as you, not I, would have it. It's hard not to always be in control or get what we want, isn't it? But God always has a plan for us. Next in our story, we have to find the green egg. Woo, okay, we have to be a little more careful. Thank you. Don't want to lose our eggs. Thank you. All right, in our green egg. Ooh, can you guys see that? Money. 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 One of Jesus' disciples named Judas took money from soldiers who arrested Jesus. <laughs> Judas felt bad for what he had done to Jesus, and he ended up returning the money. You see, Jesus knows that we are all going to make mistakes. He doesn't expect us to be perfect but he does expect us to apologize when we've done something we shouldn't and to try to make it better. Now we need our blue egg. The blue egg. Oh, 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 okay, let's give someone in the back a turn. Oh, thank you. All right, you girls are next. Okay, we're going to give our friends in the back a turn next time. All right, here's our blue egg. Let's see what's in here. Oh, look at that. Oh. Yeah, just like up there, Wendy. That's right, our cross. Jesus is like a bridge between us and God. When he was dying on the cross, Jesus was comforted by God's love. God's comfort was so strong that Jesus asked God to forgive all the bad things that people had done. Jesus reminds us to be loving, caring, and forgiving. His death reminds us that God's love is here with us on earth and with those who now live in heaven. All right, my friends in the back, can you find the purple egg? Please? Where's the purple one? Oh, thank you. Oh, look at what is in here. A rock, that's right, a rock. A white rock. A white rock. Oh, that's After, well, let's, let's learn about it. I don't know. Let's learn about the stone. After Jesus died, he was placed in a cave with a giant stone rolled in front of it. Three days later, some of Jesus' friends were at his grave when an angel appeared and told them not to be sad because Jesus was not there. You know, I know that we've talked before about how sad we are when someone dies, haven't we? Yeah, that's how Jesus' friends were feeling too, weren't they? And we didn't get to say goodbye to him. Oh, that is so hard, isn't it? Well, let's find out what happens after with this white egg. You guys ready to find out what's in the white egg? Yeah. It's our last egg. You ready? Nothing. Zero. Nothing. Zero. This egg is empty. Zero. It's we empty. Egg. Yeah, yeah. oh, just a minute. Zero. Well, this egg is, oh, that's all done. Thank you. Yeah, there's nothing in there. It's empty because the angel was right. Jesus was no longer here on earth, but had died and joined God in heaven. And we say, Alleluia. Can you say, Alleluia? Alleluia. And we celebrate Easter, even though we may feel sad that Jesus died. Because Jesus showed us that after someone's time here on earth is done, we get to continue feeling God's love for us in heaven. Easter is a time to remember how important it is to forgive others when they are sorry and to give, forgive ourselves when we are sorry. 
What do you guys think about that Easter story? Yeah, that's a pretty, that is a pretty interesting story. Jesus taught us so many things, didn't he? Yeah. Well, let's take a moment then at the end of our time together to pray. Can you guys all pray with me? Yeah. Ready? All right, here we go. Dear Jesus, we thank you for teaching us about forgiveness and for showing us how strong God's live, love for us is. both here on earth and in heaven. We ask that you help us share God's love with everyone and that you help us fix things when we make mistakes. We are so grateful to know that you love each and every one of us. Amen. Amen. Thank you, my friends.
reports and our prayer concerns. For a praise report, we are welcoming into membership today a very faithful attender who's brought his children to us, who has, uh, act, has been active in so many ways. Mike Mitterman is joining the church today. You can raise your hand, Mike. And we're so delighted that he will be taking this step and we welcome him into full membership of the church. For our prayer concerns, we want to remember Barbara in our prayers who has been hospitalized. We continue to lift up Sherry and Kate and Ingrid. We want to pray for all those in mourning. Uh, Marilyn Cushing's brother, John Hagman, died this week, and we want to remember the family in our prayers. We want to remember the people of Ukraine and those in despair. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we are so grateful to be here today, so grateful for new life. We're so grateful for additions to the church family, and we ask that you would encourage and strengthen Mike in his journey with you. We are so grateful that we can be in this space for this Easter Sunday. It has been a long two years. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us in your care and your grace. We ask that you would be with Barbara, that you would lift her up, that Sherry, Kate, and Ingrid would know that underneath them are the everlasting arms. We pray for the family of John Hagman, that you would grant to them your strength and your peace. And we ask for the people of Ukraine that peace would reign in that region. We especially bring before you those in despair, those who feel that their best days are behind them. We ask that you would remind them of your life-giving power. We ask all of this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Old Testament scripture reading is taken from Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. 
My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. O taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed spirit. A New Testament lesson is taken from the Gospel of Matthew. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
After that, who needs a sermon? (laughs) But I'll preach it anyway. Let us pray. Lord, I ask that all my words and the meditations of each of our hearts would be acceptable in your sight, O Christ, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. From the time I was a little girl, much like the children that were here today, I have heard the Easter story. I've heard it from every angle. I can recite it to you backwards and forwards, and yet we say that the word of God is active and living, so there's always new insights. And when I read something by Stan Mitchell, it was something I had never thought of before. And it comes from the Gospel of Matthew. Now, it's not about the earthquake. It's not about the radiant angel. There are two things that he noticed that I'd like to talk to you about today. It was, first of all, about those women. You know, the women had followed Jesus faithfully. They were the ones who provided for him during his ministry. When the, the guys were out preaching, what were the women doing? They were cooking the meals. They were opening the purse strings. How do you think that that uh, ministry was financed? It was financed with the women. And they had hopes and dreams for this man that they followed. He was the Messiah. He was going to usher in the golden age. Their children would be the blessed ones. Their children would inherit this marvelous kingdom. And then three years after that, what happens? The one that is beloved, the one that they had pinned all their hopes and dreams on, was dying in agony. And all those women could do was watch all their hopes and dreams die that day. And yet, the third day, on a Sunday morning, even though they were horribly disappointed, even though their dreams were shattered, they showed up anyway at the tomb because they wanted to give a labor of love. They loved him so deeply that even then, when there was nothing else for them, they showed up. How important it is when our hopes are dashed, when our dreams are gone, to keep showing up in love, showing up for our families, showing up for the people in need, showing up for our world. It is so easy to go into our own little spaces and say, I'm done. Those women had the ultimate courage and love because they showed up. And then the next thing that happened, which was so wondrous, was when the angel said to them, don't be afraid, he's risen. You notice the angel didn't say, now let me take you to Jesus. Or the choir of angels didn't come down and start singing hallelujah. He said, come see the place. He invited them back into the tomb, back into that place of death, back into that place of trauma, back into that place of disappointment. You know, so often we want to jump from Palm Sunday to Easter. We don't want to deal with our problems. We don't want to deal with our trauma. We don't want to deal with our heartache. And because of that, what happens, now I'm going to get psychological on you. What happens when we don't deal with suffering, when we push it away? Well, then we get mean-spirited. And you notice over the two years, there has been an awful lot of meanness in our world, an awful lot of anger, because we've been traumatized and we haven't dwelt in that place. We want to rush over that trauma and that anguish, but we do ourselves a disservice. So the angel says, come back in. Come back to that tomb. I want you to see it. And of course, what did they see in the tomb? 
It's the place of their trauma, but it's empty. In other words, it has no more power over them. Death has been conquered. The trauma has ended. And we must look at it, but we must also realize that because of Jesus' resurrection, because of the power of life over death, that trauma, that anguish cannot have any more power over us. We are free to live. We are free to love. We are free to continue this life in grace. That is the story of Easter. It is a story of life. It is a story that when we can look at that disappointment, we can understand that that reality is there. The death was there. The resurrection did not erase the death. They had to mark that moment, and then they realized that it had no more sway over them. And so when we are dealing with our own daily disappointments, when we are dealing with our own daily grief, we mark those places of grief and heartache. And then we look and we see that it's empty. It has no more power over us because of Jesus. Let us pray. Lord, we are grateful that your grace and power comes to those areas of grief. That you help us to mark those moments and you remove their power over us. We ask, O oh Lord, that we would live in that reality and on this side of the resurrection, in Jesus' name, amen.
gods and his son. They call him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior. By the tender mercy of our God, love has broken upon us. Light is given where once there was darkness and hope where there was only death. We go into this Easter season knowing that God will guide our feet into the way of peace. Amen. Amen. 